to make first. Uh, boo, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Housekeeping. So first of all, um, for this those... This is what it looks like to be Dave Moore. Per, don't, you, you'll <laughs> violate the, the... You're off the panel. Jesus. I totally had my money on me going first. <laughs> 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 this is some sort of elimination game. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't, I didn't mean for it to be, but if that's what it ends up as, so be it. Um, announcements. Um, for those participating in the puzzles in the program and elsewhere, uh, puzzles one through six have been solved. Please stop spamming the address. Um, if you solve other puzzles that aren't one through six, continue. The address that you should send it to is info at shmoocon.org. Um, and if you still are interested in playing the whole game, even if you haven't solved one through six, you probably still need to solve them in order to solve the big puzzle. So, but if you've solved two, don't get real excited because others have solved it before you. That will make sense to 10% of the people in the room. Um, also tomorrow, uh, the information about where the party is, um, as well as the wristbands will be distributed tomorrow. So we're printing out little things that have the name of it and everything and some useful information on how to get there, um, as well as the DJs and that kind of stuff. And then the wristbands will be given out started, starting at 10 in theory, um, but we may do it early depending on how we have our clocks synced. So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to kick off this panel. This panel um, is interesting because it seemed like it was imminent that we should have something like this. Um, uh, um, how do you want to be identified? Okay, Mike the Prez. This is Mike the Prez. I mean, it's yay, all Mike. About the press. It's all about the Prez. Um, so he um, uh, he proposed a talk that was talking about uh, academia and hacker uh, culture and how they conflict and work together and that kind of thing. Um, and Heidi and I were involved in kind of maybe setting up an event around the same topic and other people have talked about it over the years. And it seems like it was just kind of intimate, like, hey, we should get a panel together um, and talk about the union of academic infosec research and hacker infosec research or the lack of union um, at times. Um, also, uh, we were kind of, I don't know, we couldn't really come up with a keynote and frankly, I think having an interactive discussion rather than a blast from a keynote is sometimes more productive. So this is our attempt to have a keynote panel um, and we'll see how that works out. So for the panel today, when you're in school and you do well, what do you get? A gold star. I have gold stars. <laughs> so today, I will be giving out gold stars. Some of them will be... Uh, uh, not to anybody on this panel. Not, yes, pretend not to you. You've already... I've, I'm going to remove your damn phone. Um, Are you going to write our name on the board and make checks too? Yeah, well, I didn't make a dunce camp, but if someone wants to improvise one, we can, we can make... Jesus, can't even get started. Can we turn this mic off? So um, here's the deal. We're going to uh, go around and do intros. I'm going to ask a couple questions to get things started, and then we're just going to see where this thing goes. Uh, we have a, a panel that I'm frankly uh, really humbled to be involved with the people on stage. Um, I consider myself a hobbyist um, in this uh, industry, and I think these folks are downright damn professional. So um, I'm going to start. God, I hope not. What? <laughs> <laughs> Professionals not mature, I don't know. There might be a balancing act, so. Uh, want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Chris Eagle. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer at the Naval Postgraduate School at Monterey, California. Uh, so, uh, we got the... Is the, are the mics hot? Oh, Bob's working on it. <laughs> Uh, Chris Eagle, senior lecturer at the Naval Postgraduate School out in Monterey, California. Having just completed my ethics training yesterday, I'm <laughs> obligated to say that everything I say today is my own opinion and not necessarily that of a lawyer. And uh, what's that? Are you a hacker? Yes. <laughs> More hacker than academic. Woohoo! Is that your opinion or? <laughs> We could take a vote. <laughs> I'd probably fail at each. <laughs> uh, my name's uh, Michael Shearer, the President of 98. I uh, spent uh, nine years in the uh, U.S. Navy doing electronic warfare. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Beat Navy. Yeah, there you go. A lot of. <laughs> I, also, I also spent time in, in academia, and I'm uh, currently a law student. Mm. And. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Are you Jewish? <laughs> Jewish? You're not Jewish right now. How are you in law school if you're not Jewish? Oh my dear God, are you serious? <laughs> Get off the damn stage. <laughs> We're going to start on the far end. I'm an ethics first violation. Yeah, you are. Jeez. I'm Dave Marcus. I uh, used to be the director of security <laughs> research. <laughs> and 
I, the I Dave Marcus. Yeah, I did. Uh, just finish. <laughs> the Dave Marcus. Marcus. And you all are not. There you go. <laughs> God. Uh, that's a tough act to follow. Uh, I'm in Visigoth. Uh, everybody calls me Busy for short. Uh, I do stuff for people. And uh, basically, I try and help enable everybody else's research uh, with a bunch of my tools and toys that I release. And I try and carry a bunch of stuff uh, on my own that we don't really talk about so much. So that's about it. Perfect. I'm, I'm Matt Blaze. Um, Woo! Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I win. Um, then, uh, so I'm a, I'm a hacker, and I'm a, also a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and I think those are kind of both the same thing. And I have not taken the ethics training that Chris has taken, so I will say that I am speaking on behalf of the <laughs> <laughs> So for the first question, our first gold star, and I'm going to handicap Matt and Chris on this. So the other three guys are going to get a chance to answer first. Um, name the top tier academic security conferences. They have their own conferences? Yeah, okay, so they, there's no beeper, so... I triple Yeah. So, uh, Here we go. Well, let's let's that's kind of a big four, right? Use okay. Security, okay. Yeah, you guys got a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. The, the IEEE Security and Privacy, ACM, CCS, um, uh, and you know other. <laughs> <laughs> I said. I said. And, and we had to use next. Right. I presented it other. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so what's the nickname for uh, S and P? For IEEE S and P? Oakland. Oakland. Even though it's not true. Oh, so. <laughs> Where was it held in 2012? Uh, in Berkeley. No. You're correct that pre-2012 yeah. it was held in Berkeley. Where was it held in 2012? I may take your star away. I remember away. that far. <laughs> that, was, that was like this year, like just, oh, it was San Francisco. But you get bonus points. Oakland, it was called Oakland, but it was never in Oakland. It was always in Berkeley, so. The it was the hotel changed their mailing address by moving from yep. one driveway to the other, yes. thereby moving from Berkeley. Well, you know, I, the purist would say Berkeley. So here, Matt gets a gold star. Yeah. I thought I knew trivial information. That, it's not trivial anyway. Um, so I guess we're going to start uh, uh, kind of with some open-ended questions. And I guess the, one of the kind of things that everyone wants to hear people's opinion, I think, from the hacker side and the academic <laughs> side, is what's your opinion of the state of academic infosec research? Da, da, da. You're speaking for yourself. Is there a state of academic security research? Uh, do you use it? Do you use a research product from academia? There's two different worlds. There's the hacker world of research, which is really not research. And then there is, um, <laughs> it's not, it, it's really not. Here's the problem is you have people who come up with a cool idea and say, I've written this great script. Uh, oh, we're going to start this? Yeah, we are. Okay. Okay. I've written this great script and I did no research to know that 12 other people wrote it 15 times before over the last six years. Nobody documents it, so therefore the research never actually progresses. And that's a real problem. So you have this hacker community which has great ideas, none of which are documented, none of which are annotated, and the same 12 scripts get written by the same community every single year because nobody documents, nobody actually does a quick Google search, nobody progresses research forward. So I don't think the hacker community does research. I, I okay, think that's, I, I that's kind totally of an absolute. Yeah, I 100% disagree with yeah. that. I mean, that's, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's it, that's basically the kind of the kind of absolutism that that basically shows that the two sides just aren't communicating correctly. I think more than anything, the I mean, the gist of it is to say that it's only the same twelve scripts being written completely right, devalues 13, 13, right, thirteen. It is <laughs> <laughs> to say that I mean completely devalues the actual cutting edge, truly information like idea changes that occur as a result of some of the hackers and, and applied research. it's all the same thing every single con, but it's, every single year. I don't disagree with you about cons in a lot of instances, but not ShmooCon, of course. But You're welcome to say it, man. It's fine. <laughs> but I do disagree with you about research not occurring. I mean, it doesn't always get published, and so people don't always know. But there are a lot of absolutely brand new approaches to absolutely open problems that get applied and actually go to go to field that you just never hear about because they don't get published in the IEEE. But I think if nobody knows it, <laughs> but I think if, oh, bless you, Heidi, thank you. There's an excellent plan. Oh, but, I get the closed one. But I think, they're all closed. <laughs> Here, stare at it real hard. Yeah, real open. But I think, you may be right, but as it's not documented, who fucking knows? Okay? That's my point, is, is as it's not documented, it's not annotated, it's not big. Does anyone have a Leatherman tool or something? Jesus. Right and then the talk ground to a halt because we couldn't get drunk. Because <laughs> we couldn't get the first one. Wow. 
Vizzy was saying something really unique, but the beer. <laughs> Thank you. Is there audience interaction? There's always audience interaction. Cool. Hacker research is Mythbusters science. You, you're on Twitter an awful lot, aren't you, sir? You can fit that into 140 characters. That was good. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. Sir? I guess I'm the only one that doesn't have the flu. Um, so, you were going to say... Cheers. <laughs> So I guess, I guess my question with respect to, the, so there's two sides of this coin, right? There's people don't look to see what was done and therefore we reinvent the wheel versus there's really no good way to archive the data and we don't as the hacker community, you know, create publications and that kind of thing. So it makes it very difficult for people to even figure out what the hell's been done because people go to little tiny regional cons and pre present really cool stuff. Yep. And the only artifact might be a YouTube video, yeah. which is not indexable. Not indexable. So I think not that's the only difference, right? I mean, look, there's a stereotype, right? And that's that, that, you know, hackers aren't serious and that academics aren't useful. Right. And, that, you know, right. And, he said it. And, and that's the, you know, and that's absolutely true of the worst of what goes on at a hacker con and the worst of what goes exactly. on at, in an academic, academic environment. Academic environment. Yep. And, you know, and that's also true of the worst that goes on pretty much anywhere. Right. So, you know, there's non serious and not useful, you know, academic and non academic work everywhere. But that's not how you know, we don't judge fields by just what their caricature of what the worst end of it is. Yeah, but the cons so, don't require any right. academic so I think, to do that. It's but I think, of, you know, the, the best process, right? stuff at, that you see at a place like DEF CON or here or, you know, any, you know, CCC or any number of, uh, of, of you know, hacker venues is just as deep and just as hard and just as important as the best stuff that you see at, you know, the best of the academic conferences. <laughs> The difference is, you know, academics are rewarded for producing artifacts. Oh my God, this is a terrible idea. Uh, uh, the, uh, academics are rewarded for producing an, artif an artifact that, you know, you're encouraged to read. But, um, you know, if you want to play the academic game, but that's the, I think, the essential difference. It's the, you know, the, what we produce is the, as, uh, as what's left behind, not the work itself. Yeah, that artifact is all too often not practically applied out of mm -hmm. academia. Perfect. Whereas yeah. from the That's hacker world, That's actually one of the biggest problems with, with, the thing with you get going out of the hacker trying to look at a paper. I, I often get a tool. I read a paper and I get a lot of math and no tool. Right. Yep. Yep. You, we we yep. did all this stuff. Yep. Clearly yep. they've got the tools to collect the data and it never gets released. And, or they and have that's the beauty of the works. hacker world is that stuff percolates out and it becomes useful. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But my, po my point is, is if you apply the academic model to the hacker tool and the math, you get better hacker tools, and you get better documentation, and you get a better community, and you get better cons, and I'm sorry. Oh, what I said, true. what it, I just it, said, did I spill the you know, A lot of what comes out of the hacker world are, are, comes out of, you know, teenage kids who haven't, aren't grounded in the theory yet. Yeah. And, and I, the hope is you got to foster the hacker mentality because you want them to grow up and then you want them to learn sure. the theory. Ultimately, the hacker the mentality of, with rigor. The amount of, but the amount of overhead that that rigor, that rigor requires oftentimes is such that it's, it's a completely like overbearing force to the research process. I mean, how many times have we seen papers come out that basically the only, like their only significance as a paper is that they managed to cite everything that they're talking about correct mm -hmm. <laughs> right like yep. good job your paper changed the world with your citation yep, yep. So it, it, on the academic side, I think it's a bit of a big rock to push up a hill to change that process. But what about putting rigor? There's no gatekeeper. There's no advisor on the hack. I mean, at best, it's the program committee of the conference. But there are people who just, you know, I did this thing and I tweeted it, and now people know about it. Yep. You know, how do you institute that rigor without people saying, no, I'm not going to participate in your... Schmooballs. balls. I mean, maybe. A Twitter balls. <laughs> Virtual balls yeah. in the form of the lower orbit ion cannon. <laughs> I disagree. So I've reviewed for hacker conferences, and, and you know the reviewers are saying the same stuff. This has been done a hundred times before. We're going to reject it. Yeah. So you get for Black Hat, you get hundreds and hundreds of, yeah. of submissions, and you reject the, the vast majority of them for exactly the reason you're citing. So, yeah, they, it's it's happening over and over again, right? They're they're reinventing the wheel, but it's getting rejected by you know at the conference level for well, the most part. At which but, conferences? Hmm? At which conferences? Conference. Well, at certain, yeah, at certain. Depends conferences. on the conference. Yeah. 
Hopefully this conference, hopefully, you know, other, there are others that are weaker perhaps, but. Well, so it's interesting, we talk and, about. And the difference is, you take a different mentality though. Who makes up the review boards for the conferences, right? Right. If you got a bunch of hackers, you're gonna get a hacker style review. Yep. But right. they know what's been done before. Well, I expect. But they, you know, what yeah. they don't have is the rigor, right? I so, expect a certain level or lack of level of professionalism in academia to B-sides, right? Because you expect it, that's what it's for. You know, it's for new kid, great idea, never presented before, new idea. You actually get a paper to review for uh, uh, the presentation committee. Say that again, Toby. Yes, that's right. You get an abstract. You don't get a paper to review. That's correct. I would love to actually be able to say, yes, we require, we require uh, citations. Yep. You don't get in without it. But you don't get papers. You get an abstract, and if you're lucky, maybe you get a uh, long graph that gives you some yep. indication that, that somebody has an idea of what they're doing. And that's kind of the nature of it, right? I mean, Toby, as once again, has managed to accidentally say something useful, by the way. Um, <laughs> and that, and it's this, is, it, you, ever, you ever go to a virus bulletin or an ICAR? They're actually academic virus conferences. If, if you look at a submission for virus bulletin or ICAR, it's an academic conference. It's annotated. It's a paper that's actually presented. And that's what's expected there. And you're not going to be presenting there unless you present that. That's the level that's expected. And if you submit anything otherwise, you get a fail. And I think there's something to be said for that. I definitely think there's something to be said for not reinventing the wheel when it's possible. Thank you. But, but, it, really is, but it really does come down to the, the concept, I mean, at least in, in my background and what I've done, the, the, the bottom line is the shortest path to a new idea that changes the world. Yep. And so if these processes are so heavy and these processes require so much foundation, you basically will will squash all of the new good ideation that can occur I think because you're balance. requiring you require no and, and I totally agree it's a balance that's why I was saying like to, right. to the first comment that it was too right. absolute because the certainly the hacker community has something to learn from the idea of rigor I reinvent the wheel all the time I do it like constantly sometimes the wheel's square. and sometimes but sometimes the wheel is square and it needs to be wrapped and has doilies and has doilies yes <laughs> occasionally the wheel is made out of glass and we need it to be made out of something else doilies. but <laughs> But the gist of it is, I think that I think that a hybrid approach between the two, hybrid. where, uh, yeah, go. where an academic environment could maybe understand the idea that uh, that taking these ideas through to applied implementations, that people can actually carry the research forward and do something with. Because I mean, like having the abstract of a paper is really great to be able to cite and see that someone has done that work before. But if you want to carry that work any further, a paper and and their explanation of it without the actual algorithm or without a real implementation is very difficult. Yep. So I agree. You know. I, 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 not to belabor this too much, I think focusing too much on, you know, the academic conference community versus the hacker conference community is missing the point yeah, a little bit, right? It's about the research. Yeah, right. It's about, it's about the research. Right. It's about the research. Right. It's about what we're yeah. doing, right? And, you know, one of the things that academics are, you know, bend over backwards to do is be able to say, well, why is this important? Yep. And, you know, that, you know, is not something that the hacker community is as well practiced yeah. at being able to articulate for their work. I think there's a rush to fame. I think there's a rush to fame and credit yeah. in the hacker community. And, that, and that's, that's all good, right? You know, you want to be the guy that gets credit for the O-Day. You want to be the guy that gets credit for the new slide, right? Things like that. Whereas in the academic community, it's about pushing the research forward. I have something interesting to say. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Mm. No, I, I think... Right. I think uh, did I, I ask you? No, did I, I fucking think, ask you? Yes, I, you did. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I, think, I asked you. <laughs> Really? You can't hit me? Mike's I got think, a point he wants to make. I, I, yeah, that, I, that part I have to disagree with. Um, I think most people who are in the academic community, I mean, people who work in the academic community, if you haven't got tenure, you, there's incredible pressure to yep. produce research. To publish, publish or perish. To publish. Publish or perish. You know, so that but you, you know it's not publish good, like, revolutionary ideas or publish. perish. It's just publish properly cited articles. That's true. That's true. But they're putting something to their name, and they, want it, they, ha right. they need it to be associated with their name so they can, you know. There's trolls in every place. You know, you know what I mean? I, I mean, <laughs> but a documented troll, I guess, is better <laughs> like than an undocumented <laughs> troll, I guess. <laughs> like, like there are trolls on so, stage. Uh, but I guess, to my <laughs> right, oddly enough. Matt, Matt, to your point about, um, you know, the conference not focusing on the conferences. I think yep. one reason why you, you, te you may focus on it is because it is one of the few concrete things mm -hmm. that you can cite right. is this person gave a talk at this conference mm -hmm. and you know finding this person posted this thing on this blog or God help you. I've seen a lot of really interesting research where it was a tweet. Some guy's like here's this thing that I did and they mm -hmm. drop it and I'm like 
There's not even like a freaking web page to go with this thing, really, and it's like a paste bin, and you're like, this is great is stuff, research? but it's... Is that research? It, it could be foundationally, it could be very interesting stuff, mm -hmm. but we don't capture it. I mean, that's, you know, the, the hacker community, and, and in a lot of ways society, has kind of gone to this, a lot of ethereal, very rapid communication, which, you know, the academic world clearly hasn't kept up with, but the advantage in the academic world that I see is that when you go to a conference and you publish and it's in the proceedings, like, now there's this document and you can cite it. It's hard to cite a tweet, first of all, if you can find it, but then, like, you know, it's the finding it that's freaking a bitch sometimes. It's part of a body of knowledge is what you're saying. Right. Well, the body of knowledge is very ethereal. It's part of the canon or whatever. Yeah. Can, just vocabulary? I mean, you know you've got the right version. I had to use Matt paper on locks in a thing that I was writing for work, and even finding the last one, the most current one, it's a pain in the ass. Sorry. No, no. Thank, you know, <laughs> thank um, bad copyright policies. Blame the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Blame the internet. Yeah. Where, where it becomes difficult to even lay your hands on the information because mm -hmm. it's ephemeral. Right. When you're talking about tweets being ephemeral, shit, how much stuff is on Blogspot and has disappeared? Well, okay. So that I know that's that's oh, an yeah. idea that's near and dear. Okay, we'll go to that first. Well, see, we're talking about these two sets: the academic set and the hacker set. But there's a third set, right? The intersection. There's stuff happening. Uh, that's a union of both sides. So how do we grow that intersection? Well, I would, I would submit that that's not so much an intersection. So the, the comment is, how do you grow the intersection of the hacker and the academic community, recognizing that not all academics are ivory tower folks and not all hackers are sitting on Twitter eating Skittles all night long? <laughs> That's so true. I don't even like Skittles. <laughs> we have Jaeger. So do we have a mic that we could run around with, or is that impossible? There's, oh, I didn't know that. We could always do our own. I'm going to disappear for a while. So here's a question that said, okay, you've got a couple of things. You're talking about academia and the hacker world, but if this is kind of the triad, what about corporate research? Because that's focused toward producing a product as compared to producing a paper or producing some stuff. So what do you think about that, and how do you balance all three of those? I mean, you could, you could say that that kind of applied results-oriented research is definitely my background. Um, I haven't Me produced too. papers that, that require citations and things like that almost ever. Oh, okay. I learned what Chicago style was the other day. Um, somebody, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Gang themselves. So, yeah. I mean, I think that I think that a lot of that can spur can spur the the kind of philosophy that I'm talking about, where we end up in a shortest path to Ode kind of like, mm -hmm. if research is the art of failing until you don't, then fail faster. You know, do a better job of doing it more efficiently, even though you're failing at it. So that that being the case, I think that is the kind of that's the kind of uh, thing that will produce actual applicable results, and that has by far been where I've been interested. And I think that I think that the problem on the academic side is what they're incentivized by is different than, than that actually producing a thing that works in the field versus a, a paper that works yep. in the field yep. which is properly cited yep. and properly referenced. So um, it's time for another gold star because I'm going to drive this conversation a little bit. Um, could someone summarize RF policy for me? Summarize what? RF policy. Rainforest, Rainforest puppies. Rainforest policy? Yeah. Uh, Wow. It describes the interaction, but it, yeah. that was a good summer. It was actually more of a pointer. Can, <laughs> well, but he says yeah, specific, he he says specific timeline for disclosure to the vendor, an expected timeline for a vendor response to the discoverer, and a back and forth, yeah. and to where you can punt and just release because you haven't heard wow. from the vendor. So I even you notice the academics are that. getting the gold. So yeah, I was going to say you guys are well versed. <laughs> I'm impressed. So. So it's interesting. I mean, we deal with stuff that is valuable, um, and it only becomes valuable what kind of when it's invented or found or whatever. When, especially when it comes to O'Day or something like that. So um, you know, as researchers, um, how do you disclose? How do you handle disclosure? Is it different in academia versus in the hacker? Wow. Mr. Security Vendor wow. Representative. Well, <laughs> coming from a guy who works for a security vendor, um, full dis uh, ethical disclosure, right? You know, you, you give us... Ethical? So I'm unethical if I don't follow your guidelines? Let's go here! Ethical <laughs> uh, Right. <laughs> give me a gold star. Yeah, just, no. And, yeah, I don't, there's I mean, not a real good answer to that. I, 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 may not, I, may have been, I may have been put on this panel in order to have this position and field this idea. I don't. Release it. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't what? Don't disclose. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. I, I, Vizzy does not disclose. Why not? Why? It's valuable information, right? Yeah. The, the information, in some instances, value to it, there's right? business, business value, value to it. that is partially a function of 
being the only group to know it. And considering who you work for, it's their <laughs> asset, right? Right? It becomes their asset. It can, certainly. Is yeah. that a problem in academia so, where people have... My job is to disclose, right? I mean, right. that's, that's what I do for a living, yep. right? Uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, as an academic, my job is to think of things and tell people, yep. right? right? And, you know, one of the problems I have with this concept of ethical disclosure is, well, you know, ethical according to whom? Right. Right. You know, the problem is the people... The vendor. Well, exactly. You know, I don't work for the vendor, right? I work for the, you know, to the extent I work for anybody, it's the public, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, uh, so my, my ethical disclosure line does not include, you know, whether I'm embarrassing somebody with a flawed product. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, that's a good point, but that doesn't actually occur to us either. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the problem you run into, and don't forget who I work for, I work for McAfee. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, you, Vizzy finds zero day X in VirusScan Enterprise. Um, that means there's 175 million people on planet Earth that are vulnerable to Vizzy's zero day, okay? Before Vizzy releases, we need to have a fix in place that doesn't put that 175 million people in jeopardy. So Vizzy needs to get complete credit for, for the stuff that he's done and everything mm -hmm. he's found, but we need to also be able to apply a fix right. to those people so they don't assume risk and stuff like that. So it's just about, that's what so, I mean by ethical but, disclosure. But I think here's the problem, is that's and too I don't narrow think that's And I don't think that's in conflict right. either, by the way. He gets credit, Manning gets credit, people are protected. But I think that takes a, a too narrow a view. Ah, oh, who cares about money? Oh. <laughs> missed, missed. Dude, I'm not big enough, you can't hit me, really? I think there's a question. Hold on. The next person that misses me needs to do a shot of Jaeger, okay? Come on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, try it again. I mean, the model that I was talking about is not disclosing. Question. So, is Izzy the only person able to find bugs in the caffeine? Yes. No. So there, there's huh? One of them, and only because yes, there's one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's, Duh. that's unlikely, specifically in McAfee products. <laughs> okay. we, have, we have a question off to stage left. So in the in the, go on the road. <laughs> in the case of academia, when, when academics disclose to a vendor, you know, they, they can go ahead and, and write about it later and they get their rewards of publication. In the case of the hacker community, what what um, what reward comes from disclosure, uh, you know, if, it, if it's fixed? Lawsuits. Lawsuits, yes. Microsoft will thank you. You lost me. Yeah, can you, can you restate the question? We both got lost. I, you, got, you lost me on that well, one. Well, I think the question is, what, what's the, 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 in the academia, the motivation to disclose well, is that's your job, you're, doing, you're an academic, that's what you do. Right. In, in, in the hacker community, uh, your motivation to disclose may be different and potentially negative. Right. So in, well, that's a good in academia, what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the motivation to disclose a zero day in my right. company's now, product in the hacker community. In the, in the case, in the hacker community, in the case that there's an explicit bounty, then there's money. But in the case that there's not, in academia, you can disclose something, not get a bounty, but you still get your paper, you still get to publish about yep. it. But in the, case, in the hacker community, without a bounty, you know, there's, there's not necessarily a motivator to disclose, document, and, and get it, you know, somewhere visible. I think, I think that used to be partially, like, motivated and, and people were rewarded. Uh, when it wasn't such a barrage, it's less so. Nice. You know, when when basically some somebody actually managing to own, you know, OpenSSH like Dowd did back in the day was so epic that uh, they the, the fame and fortune essentially that they received, you know, they became a babe magnet for their Oday, right? Because that's how that works. <laughs> so, I mean, the gist of it is like, but but really, the the reputation that they gained made yeah. it so that they were a sought after resource. Credibility, Credibility. yeah. <laughs> I think that was reason to disclose publicly. I guess there might be some kind of reason to disclose to the vendor that would be altruistic. I don't know. Depends. <laughs> Yeah, right. absolutely. It's hard but, to say. You know, we got a question yeah, over here. It's, it's, well, it's hard actually, to say, I, I kind of want to respond on that a little bit because okey dokey. I'm in an interesting spot. Uh, I work for ICS Cert, so I've I've talked to both academic researchers and non-academic researchers, for lack of a better word, and <laughs> you know the, there are some cases where people just want to get their names out there. I've seen that. You know, it's it's it is what it is. I have no problem with Luigi. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it is what it is. No, you know, <laughs> some people just like that, that, that cr of getting their name out there. 
And that the, used to be much more the case than it, it is now. Now right. it's such a barrage that being the guy who found the bug right. or whatever doesn't mean anything. Finding but, another but the interesting, in IE or Adobe is really not a big deal, right? The, the Finding another one in Java, who fucking cares? The interesting problem is when you get two researchers working independently finding the same bug, and we've literally had this, where we've had two researchers giving us the same bug days apart. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who, who yep. gets the credit? I guess my question is, who cares? Well, if the only currency that you're trading in is the reputation and the credit, yeah. that's who cares. I mean, if that's the only reason to disclose publicly, if altruism isn't there and it's to build the reputation. Again, with my vendor hat on, vendor doesn't care. So, so is this leading to a path where hackers well, will you know, disclose less and less? So I think this might be something where the, us academics have an edge in understanding why we're doing it, right? Yeah, Which is, do. you know, I mean, one of the things, you know, better. I don't go and look for bugs in software, right? But occasionally I find bugs in systems, you know, vulnerabilities in systems as a side effect for trying to understand something yep. somehow th larger that we can learn from, right? So, <laughs> what I tell my students is that your job is to, you know, your, your job is to be a public intellectual, right? You work for the public. And, what? Do, do my students listen to me? <laughs> I, I hope. Uh, you know, I certainly, I, I certainly hope they eventually learn not to. But you know, that's the starting point that I give them, right? You're, you're supposed to be a public intellectual. That's, you know, your job is to do things for the betterment of the community as a whole, and that's the metric you should use when and, you well done. Figure and, out yeah, what exactly. Well, like I'm, I'm on yeah. the, I'm on the non-academic side, and while I, you know, believe in the academic rigor process and stuff like that, applying it all the time doesn't work. But for me, like I've been a hacker and on that side of things since you know, like the beginning, and I've been listening to him for many years. So I hope that that's uh, at least partially a measure. Right? Not that Matt's old. I know, right? I've just, yeah. just, just got to watch what you're saying there, yeah. man. <laughs> I think, I think the, the incentive to disclose is, like, I think it's driven by the market mechanism. So I think the bug bounty is, is, is the market responding to, hey, we want to get this stuff. And because that exists, if there's no bounty, the and the reputation or the, the street cred doesn't come as much as it used to, then pe it, it, it's, people are just not going to do it. They're just yeah. going to keep it to themselves. Or it goes into the black hole toolkit or it gets used in some other way, right? Right. Yeah. right. Absolutely. You know, it gets put in a toolkit and people use Question their own machines, right? Question. <laughs> the, uh, oh, sorry. The, um, it's a lot of hands. The lot title of, hands. of this, this panel is about what hackers can learn from academia. Talking. And I'm going to ask oh, okay. uh, if we're even accomplishing that. I'm not sure we are. But if we are, what, is, what was the idea that we were trying to learn? Because academics, they publish, it hits journals. If you don't have a subscription or you're not a part of an organization with, with that subscription, it's as good as me publishing to Twitter. Uh, or, and, or not publishing. Or not at all. Or not. But, but frankly, I, I don't care that the wheel's reinvented by everybody because usually that's a learning process and they're developing and they're sharing and they're growing personally, which is a good thing as well. Yeah. So uh, what, is, what, what was the point that we're trying to learn here? The point for me was to be on a panel and get my Schmoocon ticket. <laughs> oh. Okay? <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. That being said... Three strikes, you're out. You're out of here! I get a gold star. Uh, yours doesn't count. <laughs> but it's a good question. It's a good question. I, I think all that stuff is true. I think my argument is process. Is applying a rigorous academic pro... It's not what you learn as a hacker and how you hack, okay? To me, it's about how you hack and how you document and how you do bibliographies and things like that and how you build a body of knowledge and move forward rather than just saying, I did X, but I didn't check it against what other people have done and I'm moving some things forward. That's, to me, what we're talking about here. I, I think, you know, personally, um, one of the problems, again, the reason why we have the con is because we um, don't want to see the wheel get reinvented. We don't want to see um, incomplete, incorrect <laughs> research get propagated forward, but there's very a uh, few gatekeepers in the um, hacker community that, that we'll call bullshit, which is the yep. opposite of what we see in the academic community where there's potentially an excessive number of gatekeepers preventing research from yep. you know, seeing the light of day. And I think there's something to be learned
from both sides. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really the objective. And I think, you know, we have some enlightened yeah. academic on stage who can help shed a lot of light into areas that might be uncomfortable for other people within the academic community. I mean, so. these are fundamentally different processes, right? If you yep. publish in academia, there's a very rigorous process to yep. getting your product published. Okay, if you want to publish in, in a hackerspace, you post it on a blog. Done. Boom. Right? <laughs> okay. Right. In academia, when you no want to do it. No one checks your shit. No one calls you on your shit. That's right. No, or, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think plenty of stuff. Oh, come on. It's like, this is old. Twitter is not the same thing as. Cra it's but that's the way it's, it's the works in a hackerspace. In, in, in academia, there's an entire infrastructure set up just for doing literature review, right? You've got all these archives of all these documents that facilitates this type of thing. In the hacker world, what do you have? Google. Right. Right? How do you know that that no, script's been written you, what all the time? What's your search facility flaming, to get that up? What's your archival mechanism? So, so um, a, in an attempt to drive this forward in a slightly meaningful way, how do you make a better citable body of knowledge outside of the Googles? You require, do you go back to demos and we have a curated it. directory of security it. research? Well, Bruce, Bruce if, I, if, if I might, yes, the, the voice. <laughs> oh, he's down in front. All right, yes. There, there was a different motivation a long time ago in the hacker community, in the, in, the act, in, in the advisory section, going all the way back to Core and Zardoz and going back to Adel-GM and what we tried to do with the law with a lot of those, which was you didn't know how it was done, and it's fine. I'll let the vendor know. You can fix it. You can do what you want. Credit's great, and you know, that's one of the reward sections. But we want the other vendors to know when it's a novel, new sort of thing so go. that they don't right. make the there same fucking mistake. Right. There you go. Yeah. Now, it's about yeah. moving things forward. Yeah. Moving and things and forward. that's kind of what's still in the academic stuff. I don't see papers in IEEE or using security going, I found out how to do, do a buffer flow overflow also. Here's just a different ROP mechanism. It's the same sort of my memory was not executable. It's sure. something new. It's a right. timing attack. Yeah. It's a side channel leak. It's something else. And you yeah. need to know the fundamentals and the basics and share it that way. But somehow with the bug bounties and everything else, it's rewarded people for engineering efforts. Yep. Exactly. And we're yep. talking about publishing engineering work I rather than agree. the research. It's not about making the so industry better. So how do better. we get the fundamental hacker ethics back into sharing the research, which I think is on par with the academic mm -hmm. community yeah. in many areas, but that we bring that motivation back in? That's, mm -hmm. I think that's an extremely good point. There is a lot of, uh, as much as I would really love to call any, any time anybody's trying to do something that they feel is new research, I will put some bounds on the definition of research. And there is a lot of, there is a lot of, of crossover for what I would call engineering, where people are taking a really uh, a well-known thing and applying it in a new way, but it's still fundamentally they are engineering something rather than researching something. Mm -hmm. And certainly it seems like in the information security community and in the hacker community in general, the incentive that used to be there for the research is now mostly there for the engineering. engineering. We throw the word research around a lot in the hacking community, and it's not research. Sorry. Some Sorry, of it, guys. Some not of research. it is, though. Some. It's not the <laughs> point. Turning more into around the horn than uh, anything else. I'd be curious to yeah. see if, <clears throat> if... I didn't say we did it. I'd be did curious I, to did see I say we did it, though? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious to see if a, if a conference gave preference to, uh, I don't want to say cited research, but, you know, someone who submits a white paper with their, uh, you know, with their, uh, with their abstract uh, citations to prior work. Uh, because, honestly, if you give a presentation, in a hack, regardless, academic hacker, if you're building on someone else's work and you're not citing them, I mean, it's plagiarism. Flat out. What, whether or not it's intentional or not, it's plagiarism. Flat out. It's unethical. Really? Am I the only one? That's true. Really? <laughs> you guilted them into applause. I'm taking this back. And, no, and you're right. You're, you're saying there's no consequences. You're right. There is no consequences now, but maybe there should be consequences. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not, I, I don't want to take, bring ev all the tools from academia into the hacker community because I think it would, it would ruin a lot of work, frankly. It, I believe it would. Well, no one would pay attention. R and right. And, yep. Then again, uh, I, and I'm, I, I talked to some other people, and I, I, I don't see him here, but he's taken a course in, in, in cybersecurity at UMUC, which is generally considered one of the you know, better programs in the country for cybersecurity. Is he in here? Who? Uh, okay. Anyway, we're using pronouns. But, but he said that that his professors are they're two three years behind in the stuff that they're presenting, and 
and they're not willing to consider the bleeding edge because it's not academic. Right. The hacker community is tactical. The academic community is strategic. That's not necessarily true. true. I disagree. We have, we have a question in the, in the back. So, you're wrong. Not, no, above you. I'm sorry, sir. The guy with the microphone. You're not wrong. So when we're talking about rehashing everything and going back and reinventing the wheel, what kind of feedback are we giving the people who are submitting the papers? You know, when you're submitting an academic paper, you're going through a review board, you're getting notes and comments back. You're saying, this has been done, this has already been, you know, a road already traveled, but you had an interesting idea here. You need to move here. You need to take the focus and move to something that, that's new and novel. You know, you know, you know <laughs> and, and what's happening, you know, you're coming back and saying, all right, well, I submitted 10 papers, nine of them were rejected, and I got a fire talk out of it. But of those other nine papers that went forward, you know, where's the feedback saying, okay, it's already been done, you need to give up on this idea, you yep. need to move on, you need to read this, this, this and is you the need to evolve. This is the only conference, I presented, the at, you got? Yep. I presented at a, a dozen different conferences, this is the only conference that I've ever gotten feedback. Me too. Both from the, um, from the committee and also from people who attended the talk. But, you know, in the academic community, I mean, the feedback you get is very mixed, too, right? Yeah, I mean, but you sometimes, get feedback. sometimes you get reviewers who do a really good job of explaining what's wrong. Others, you know, will give you a, you know, really bad I can or tell you incomprehensible this. review. I mean, that, you know, the people do a good job and a bad job everywhere. Right? I've submitted for VB, I've submitted for ICAR, and I've submitted for Intel, and I've submitted for McAfee, and I've submitted for hacker conferences. And I can tell you this, academic conferences, you get feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't get feedback. I'm sorry. But you do the, get feedback. The people on the CFPs for Black Hat and mm -hmm. DEF CON, with the exception of Shmukon, in all honesty, not because I'm sitting up here, I, I've gotten feedback on why my talk was not accepted. Mm -hmm. That's one of the few. The others are just like a boilerplate response on, you suck. Submit next year. Here's your charity ticket. You know, but if you submit to VB or ICAR, they will tell you line by line why your shit stinks. And I, that's helpful. So, so we keep telling you why your shit stinks makes your shit stink less in the future. Uh, I, no, it, do, it does not. Um, <laughs> no, no, the last time that, that ended badly last time. Um, we keep coming back to conferences, like kind of counter to Matt's original guidance, which is why the hell we keep talking about conferences. Um, it seems like in the hacker community, we're almost saying the only real attempt at having some sort of rev legitimate review is the conference program committee, because we're not talking about it. There's no other entity, no other body we've talked about. So, you know, we're saying, okay, I guess this is the best we got, so let's critique this. Is that kind of... I mean, there's, a, there's definitely a lack of any kind of like unified review board or formalized review structure. And so that being the case, the amount of feedback that anybody gets, they have to try and sift through the nonsense that they get back from people hating them on Twitter, et cetera, right. to try and find anything right. with which to better themselves, right? Or let's say, let's say all the people I should write submit, it in Ruby. Let's say all the people who submit for, for ShmooCon 2014 suck, okay? And they, so you submitted all the talks? Of course, duh. Okay. They're all terrible. Well done. Let's say they all suck. Would you give them good feedback and have them resubmit, or would you cancel ShmooCon? If every talk sucked, we would go yeah. source good talks. You would source good We would talks. go find people we know that did good research and get them on stage. How many do you think do that? That's like all the molecules in the room suddenly migrating to that corner. Yeah, I was going to say, you're not... It, it <laughs> could happen. It won't. It's, it's highly unlikely. Yeah. You have a question. Uh, I hope it's a question. I've been a professor. I've been a startup founder. And now I'm at Microsoft. I've had papers at Usenix Security, IEEE Symposium, DEF CON, and ShmooCon. So I've got a bit of perspective on the difference. Um, at an academic conference, most of the papers are crap. They're, they're, all, they're all true, but they're mostly irrelevant. <laughs> And at a hacker conference, most of the talks are crap because half of them are just wrong and half of them don't know about prior art. So they're, it's... They're all which, crap. Which, did you want yin or yang? Uh, no, they're mostly crap. Sturgeon's law applies to both. 90% of everything is crap. Do you have a paper that proves that 90% of the people are not Yes, we'd love to receive your references. Pri prior art, Theodore Sturgeon. So you keep <laughs> filtering the stars. Star you took two. Give me one back. You oh, second. you bastard. So do you have a question, Crispin, or are you just... Um, that, I'm hoping if there's If I, if I have some, fe some feedback for the con, the, the big difference that gives academic cons leverage over hacker cons is academic cons make you submit the full paper. Yeah. Hacker cons uh, select talks based on a paragraph and the reputation yeah, of the and, speaker. And, and, and 
you know, true. academic conferences oh, cool. scare away a lot of really cool stuff because yep. of that requirement. So, so there's there's an, and in between, there are, there are <laughs> there's a middle ground. There, there are academic conferences that take the middle ground and they ask there's for a, a paper ground. proposal and it's yep. like five or six pages yep. and, and so forth. There's a middle and ground. I think my 15 seconds is up. Your, your submission, which says, I has written scripts and am great hacker, not a real good submission. Well, no, it's tough, though, because sometimes we get submissions that are poorly written, but when you look at the work that's been done, you go, holy shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that there have been talks that have ended up on this stage that through the, the, the attempts to, you know, convince us otherwise, it was great research, you know. It was, it was poorly written, it was an incomplete submission. They are exceptions, but they, they do happen. But that's, and, the, that's the benefit of a rigorous CFP process. Yeah. Well, that's fair, yeah. but, but at that point, then we're saying, okay, so I hacker mean, cons are the gateway to, you know, publishing in the hacker community, and then it really just relies on how good's the program committee. I, and who's of, your program kind of, committee? I disagree. I that disagree. kind of lightning it's, strike, though, clearly happens at places like DEF CON and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 oh, absolutely. There are the rare, yeah. there are the yeah. diamond in the rough talks where they are presenting something that is truly new. Right. That isn't the 12 scripts. Right? That is true. 13. Right. Pardon me. I give you that. Would, oh, you, would, you, can, would you put Gobble's talk from like Def Con 10 in that category? What was that? Gobble's talk from like Def Con 9 or 10 in that category where uh, it was batshit crazy but really <laughs> awesome? <yeah>. Right? <laughs> mm, I don't know. And you don't want to, you, you don't want to, forget it. Good. Excellent. Question? <laughs> so, too much Jaeger. We, you know, or not enough. I, I've been on the, program chair for ShmooCon for most of it, along with Ben and I leading it, and, and Crispin's done a lot of work. And we intentionally tried to find a middle path on here because we believe that both of these things suck. And if you look at what we do, we, 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 we say in essentially uh, plain English, we want something that approximates research. We say we give great preference to a new and original work. Of course. And, yep. and, and the PC does things like downrate things that have been presented before and so on and so forth because we, we don't want to make someone do all of the work and then have to go shop it to a conference because I, I also have done academic papers and so on and that sucks. And especially when you know you did something good and they just don't get it. And it's also Yet another me too. Oh, I found another buffer overflow in that. There are entirely right. too many, too, too yep. many hacker cons where the talk is a well-worn path is finding something new. Yep. So how do you do a little bit more of both? I mean, we've been trying to do it here, and thank you very much for the words of encouragement. But how do you how do you do something on the other end, where it allows things that are more bleeding edge? Because it really is true that the academic stuff is several years behind what's going on in the real world. Did, did they not get your CFP or did you not write your CFP correctly? That they got it, that they didn't get it? Who, what? He's the guy that's my, selecting well, my point, the papers. My point is the person, <laughs> well my point, uh, it's marketing, right? No, Dude, no, that's no, not, no. <laughs> so here. So here. I'm gonna borrow your mic. That's a great question. Well, That's I'm a, a hacker. Really Not all academics are hackers, right? I mean, so, 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 and, and they don't have to be, right? So, so how, I, how I try to build different? tools. I try to build tools that are, are, are useful, you know, across the board. I don't, I don't tend to spend my time trying to advance theory, right? So a lot of ha academic research is advancing theory. I try to apply it and, and build tools that are general purpose. When you start to migrate to hacker cons, you see a lot of one-offs, right? It's the same old buffer overflow. But what, you know, I sometimes wonder if we're worrying about you know, the wrong stuff. Do these things need to be reconciled? What do hackers want to see at a hacker con? Do I want to know how to own a, a Cisco router? Or do I want to learn some theory that will let me own everything, right? So a lot of people want to know how to own a Cisco router. That's a one-off, right? And, and so you don't write an academic paper on how to own a Cisco router on a particular buffer overflow. It just doesn't fly. <laughs> Question. It's a question, right? Please, yes. God. Okay. Yes. Because there's been a lot of ranting here. Um, I was wondering if a, a couple of you guys uh, with differing opinions, preferably, would uh, chime in on what you guys mean by research. Because when I, when I think about research, mm -hmm. I think about blue sky research. I think about things that got us transistors, other 
like absolutely inventions, uh, which a are a bit question. more novel than say, you know, like wow, here's the latest way to use Google to profile something or another. I, okay. I think it boils down to new big ideas. I mean, sort of the short answer is if you're applying a, a well-known idea in a, in a slightly novel way, I don't know if I'd call that research, but if you're formulating a new big idea and using it to solve somewhere that there's a gap or using it to solve somewhere that there's coverage but there's <laughs> radical inefficiency and that kind of thing, um, I, I think really it, it boils down almost to how much it, it causes us to have to change the way we think about the problem. If, if it causes a big change to how we think about the problem, then I would call it research. So, no. So, so how many talks are no. causing Hang on, I have Very a few, actually. I have the conch. Very few talks on closing. Oh, so we, we don't have a hell of a lot of time here, and I do want to address but one thing. The question uh, is, it's a it, disciplined process. That's the difference between... <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm so glad it's not me. I mean, somebody somewhere can certainly pull up the Webster definition of, of research, okay? and it doesn't have the word academic in front of it. Okay, it's a. No, we have a security group at, at my school. I, th I think for me, when I see uh, when I see something anywhere, whether it's watching a con talk or TED or something like that, and I say, "Wow, I never thought of that," or wow, I never thought of doing that that way, to me, that's research. I agree. No, I, agree. I, no. I know that's sort of a backwards <laughs> definition. No, no, I agree. That's engineering. That's, that's no, actually, that's sorry. not so much the definition as the technique for identifying. No. It. Right, right. right, I agree. So one thing that has happened that's over and over in the last 45 minutes is we talked about O-Day, buffer overflows, honing, things of that nature, and there's been very little discussion about defensive research, uh, both from the academic side and from the hacker side. So, and, and I know this is a rock that's been pushed uphill to uh, no progress whatsoever. Um, is there any way, I mean, we, we, the, the term has been thrown around to make defense sexy, I don't even want to go there, uh, but the reward, if the reward on the hacker side is credibility or money, if you're hoarding it, I don't mean to call you a whore or hoarder. hoarder. Um, <laughs> um, for O'Day, is there any motivation left to build defensive technologies <laughs> in at least the hacker community or even the academic community? The Blue Hat Prize. The Blue Hat Prize is the single motivator for defensive technologies in the entire industry. No one is interested in defensive technologies. It's So look, That's true. That's the, interesting. The, the, Look, I mean, That's interesting. You know, well before anyone here was born, um, <laughs> you know, the first problem in computer science that anyone noticed is that we don't know how to write programs that that work, von right? Newman. I mean, this has been it's around a issue. for a while, yep. right? Um, you know, what the best we have is we look at how things fail and we learn how to avoid doing that. Occasionally, no, we don't. Right, occasionally. Just, occasionally. Just occasionally, what we do, right? what we do is continually so, you know, I, I mean, show I how things fail. I don't actually, we continually show how they fail. I don't. We don't, I don't create I don't new technologies a, that don't fail. I don't see a big distinction between offensive and defensive research. I think you know, in order to do one, you have to do the other. Yeah, but here's the thing: is everybody wants? Who in here has written something that get pa gets past AV? Hands, hands, hands. Who in here has written something that makes AV better? That doesn't work in an A lot less company. hands. A lot less hands. I think you have to look at it. I think you have to look at it from <laughs> the talk that made the AV better got rejected. Yep, that's right. So we're looking toward the future. Right, right. I think he's not an open It's not the point. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's not the point. <laughs> can we give him a gold star? Yeah, it, it's give him a gold star. <laughs> sir, I'm, sir. Can we... Seriously, come up and get a gold star. Who's writing AV come that up actually and get works? Come your gold star, Cryptos. Uh, <laughs> what, where'd it come from? Oh, you gave, you gave I, him yours? I checked it out. I checked it out. Oh. Okay. I don't mind giving him my gold star. Look at Dave redeemed himself. It's like an after school special. <laughs> yeah, you shot for you too, son. Come on now. You know you want some. We have a question. You, know you want some. Go. Ask it. So, one of the elephants Woo! in the room. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> One of the elephants in the room is popularity contests. So, uh, not ShmooCon, but other conferences really focus on, you know, how popular it is, and attack is one of those things. So that's why attacks are things talked about because it's sexy, right? Yep. So, getting 
yes, I did say six. So one of the things that like you want to do as a as an attacker or as someone submitting to a conference is do something that's sexy so it gets submitted and accepted. Of course. Yep. Uh, let me give you an example of uh, from a different field. So I was I was in the military. I was in naval aviation, and everyone who grew up in the '80s who saw Top Gun wanted to be a fighter pilot. Well, <laughs> I many, totally did. I was a bombardier. I, okay, oh, yeah, many, totally. many, pe many people who grew up in the 80s <laughs> once, <laughs> wanted to go into the Navy and be a fighter pilot. Well, not everybody can be the F-18 or the F-14 F pilot, right? So I was in, I flew EA-6, I was flew in EA-6B Prowlers, which are very ugly planes. Yes. But, <laughs> <laughs> however, however, what we did, what we did was we supported the fighter pilots by shutting down the enemy radars so they could get in, right? So what we did was not sexy work. It was ugly work, but we took pride in what we did because we helped save lives of other people. Now, defense in this way, you may not be saving lives, but you're doing something for your company, you're doing something for your clients, you're saving them money, you're saving them a hassle, you're, you're doing something that you should take pride in, regardless of whether or not the outside rewards are there or not. I, I think, though, his comments may have been specifically to papers and talks. You know, you're not, you're not going to get the talk. You're not going to get the talk slot at a, at a conference because your work was doing the right thing well, in the right. trenches. That's right. You're going to get the talk because your shit was sexy. Yep. Like, period. Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Did you ever see the epic tanker refueler? Yeah. Uh, 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 Dude, that was great. Eight hours of flying over the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have for lunch? That guy, that, that guy so that I have a totally missiles, different he was question. Hot. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I have a totally different question. Sure Excellent. Good. The number of talks that we've that have been at uh, extremely popular conferences like Black Hat, where they've submitted the presenter has submitted an idea that they've done no actual work for, and then they put they talk about on Twitter two or three weeks before the con, hey, maybe the con's coming up, maybe I should actually do the thing that I said that I'm going to present about. How do we as a community stop that kind of bullshit research? Whoa. The con itself. I have never I, done that. I think, in all honesty, like, it might be, that might be a function of like, uh, having it become a thing where a hacker conference can actually revoke someone's acceptance. Well, okay, no, so here, you but demand to see the product. That's when I cool. review it for Black Hat, I say, I don't believe it, show it to me, and then, then I'll, yeah. I'll get back to you. But, you know, the general reviewer doesn't do that, right? <laughs> back. Well, so, but, but, so the, the counterpoint, though, and this is something that I know that we talked about um, kind of offline ahead of time when we were discussing, is the, the, the gate, the rate of research. And so when you say, hey, you need to, if the CFP for Black Hat's like, what, in February or March or something, and then you have to have a fully baked product and then hold on to it for six months or whatever yeah. until Black Hat is, you Good know, how many people are going to actually yeah. do Good that? Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Good luck with that. that. <laughs> Well, that's how academic conferences work, but if the motivation here is fame and money versus, you know, I'm an academic and I'm doing this for slightly different reasons, you know, why would people actually finish the job six months earlier? No, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying because I've been that jackass, so. Who hasn't done, an, like, yeah, all of them before. that way? Yeah, right. <laughs> the day of. Boom. Ten minutes before, motherfucker. Hmm? Come on. Atlas has got a... <laughs> First of all, <laughs> how many cons are going to shut down that kind of press? Second of all, right. Right. does the talk suck? If the talk sucks, then... Well, if the talk doesn't suck, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the thing. If it gets, yeah. if it gets the press and, and, it, and, and people are engaged, I mean, this is even, I mean, people get rewarded for, for presenting the same thing over and over at conferences, even if it's the same research, it's because it packs the room. It's a tour. Right? It's not, it's not a con, it's not research, it's a tour. Right, and, and, tour. and that's something, I mean, and again, we're not trying to, I, I'm not here to try to toot true cons horn, but we, we push, as John pointed out, we push back hard against stuff that's been presented elsewhere. Good. We'd rather have a half-empty room with someone presenting a new idea like that gets idea. out there, rather than have a packed room with someone who's presenting the same thing for the 20th time. And here's the deal then, I guess, if you like that model, and if the feeling from this, this panel seems to be conferences are the gatekeeper, you know, ignoring some of the work that comes out that's just flat out awesome that comes out, you know, Bluebird, if conferences are the gatekeeper, it's up to you to put pressure on the conferences yep. to say, I've seen this before, I don't like it, this is bullshit, it hasn't advanced it, put together a better program committee. I mean, this is your responsibility to help fix. 
Yeah. No, most program committees can look through and see better stuff. Bruce, Black Bruce, Ops of Bruce, TCP. One, I don't know. Oh, one we got one here. more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Um, what, I, I will say that we also have a fundamental responsibility, which is to put on a good con. And an awful lot of what goes on, particularly in a con like ShmooCon, is, is this going to be a good talk? Which is a different question for, from, is it good research or is it anything else? And there are lots of things that we accept because they are a good talk. Now, having good research is a really good way to have a good talk, but that's we fair. have to put on a good con. There certainly is an entertainment factor for conferences. Absolutely, yeah. no doubt. That's right. Yeah. Well, it, well, that's something at hacker cons. And, yeah. and you don't have, there aren't many, I mean, you have invited tracks at academic cons, yeah. but like, you don't have well, papers like, this would be a really entertaining well, paper. But, but the, reason that I, the reason that I go to conferences is, I mean, the talks are going on, but I'm, I'm here for the hallway. Right? And, yeah. and at this, every time. versus and, like you No, everywhere, everywhere. Okay. I'm okay. always there for the hallway, right? I mean, in particular at an academic conference, I can read the paper, right? But the single most important thing I get out of a conference is the community. No, and you can, right. you can, you can read the paper later. Yeah. Yep. 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 Right, okay. Yeah. All right, so we're an hour into this thing and people are getting hungry and there's probably like diabetics going into shock. Um, so uh, we've, got, we've got one, everyone has a gold star. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to ask the panel their opinion of what they think the best research that they've seen in the last 10 years, wherever the hell it came from, and what you think the most important research is going to be done in the future is going to be. Um, yeah, not, not to put you on the spot, um, because it's kind of an open-ended question. So I'm going to put this guy, who I just gave the charity star wow. to, on first. And you got like 30 seconds, man, to, to summarize it. What's the best thing you've seen in the last 10 years? I see a lot of... I see a lot of research. Uh, AV. <laughs> it's going to be big, like plastics. <laughs> <laughs> Hold this. Um, come back to me. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, come back to me. The, the, this, uh, the spur of the moment, man. I'm taking your star I'll, back. I'll you go. can't win. All right, you go. I'll go. So and my Jaeger, this, is, the, I'll, this is more of a general trend. But honestly, in the last 10 years, I think defense has gotten a lot better. I think it really I has. I think. Ten, five years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, it was a lot easier to own boxes than it's I, his opinion. It depends on the target, but I think there are some people now that are doing defense a lot better than they were even five years ago. Is it a lot harder, busy? Is it a lot harder now? Do you sweat more? Uh, I get paid more. That <laughs> Uh, I, I'll go. I'll go out on a limb. I think one of the best things that I've seen in the last ten years that's that's been the newest, coolest thing uh, that I've seen published was the the leap to the idea of of purely hypervisor driven uh, uh, implants, root really? kits that could live entirely in virtualized right. spaces. Right. I think that's actually really serious business. That took a very strong leap, and the implementation like was initial but functional. Right. You know. And as far as direction that I think things are going, uh, if I had to, again, sort of go out on a limb, I think that some of the work that's, that's literally just scratching the surface and in the very, very beginning stages in symbolic analysis and program analysis via symbolic reduction. Oh, going back to the 50s. Right. Okay, cool. But people are carrying that forward now in a way I think that's becoming applied. Yeah. And is becoming new again, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to say a, give a negative one, right? It's okay. the thing that the, the best thing that we we've stopped doing in the last ten years. Uh, I've noticed uh, no paper written in 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 the last few years, sometime in the last ten years, makes the case that security is important. You don't have to bother doing that anymore. I think that is a huge accomplishment for yeah. the community. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's true. What? Not, we're not there yet. I have my gold star. We, well, we got to see who wins. Because everyone's, everyone's equal. We're like five-year-old soccer right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Anything? So I'm going to cop out, and I'm going to pimp Ben's project capsicum. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Which is a capabilities uh, uh, product for free ABSD. So take a look at it if you haven't looked at it. I see nothing new. Any final Maybe comments from the panel? You rather than all the research. It's possible. I, All right, I'm going to declare the winner to the first annual, probably the only ShmooCon Academic Hacker Meetup, to be Matt Blaze. So let's get out of here. Real quick announcement: the bar is going to close at 2 a.m. upstairs tonight. Uh, boo -hoo, boo -hoo, I know. It turns out it's the law. Um, 
and then they have to come through and clean. So if you're still there at 2 a.m., you can go find a quiet, quiet space. Oh my God! The the, the clock and the bars. NTP sinks. No, do not hack the bar. Do not hack the bar. <laughs> God. All right. Have fun. See you all tomorrow. Where's your here, Teddy? Hey. Fuck is that? Oh shit!